Article 1. The first order of business in the U.S. Constitution establishes a Congress of the United States consisting of a Senate and a House of Representatives. Why two bodies in this single branch of government? The rallying cry of the American Revolution had been no taxation without representation. And as the framers of the Constitution debate the form of this new national government, they must balance how the states will be represented with a way to directly represent citizens in the making of laws and creation of policy. The delegates' answer is to divide the power of Congress between two different and equal institutions. The Senate, where each state, regardless of size, has two senators, and the House of Representatives, where membership is based on population. The greater the population of a state, the more representatives it has. The framers of the Constitution envisioned Congress as the forum for resolving even strongly opposing ideas into law and policy for the nation. But the House would be the people's chamber, the body closest and most responsive to the people. In the famous words of Alexander Hamilton, here, sir, the people govern. Here they act by their immediate representatives. It's often assumed that most of the work and activity of the House is on the floor. But when the floor is quiet, the work of the House continues throughout the Capitol and its office buildings. Members are meeting in committees to shape legislation in health, education, energy, the environment, foreign affairs, agriculture, and other areas. Hearings are underway to gather a range of information and opinions on policy and programs and to investigate public issues or government operations. Members of the House move rapidly from caucus meetings and party conferences to research sessions with experts, scholars, and staff. They request and review information from the Library of Congress and the Congressional Budget Office. Respond to a steady stream of letters and emails from their home districts and are visited by constituents, the people they're here to represent. Members frequently return to their districts to learn about emerging issues, report back on pending legislation, and to be available to citizens who are trying to solve a problem or learn what their government is doing. Making a difference in the lives of constituents is the essence of public service. Our federal system of government is based on representative democracy. Our representative is the voice and vote of our district on the national stage and is Washington's most direct tie to us. Like the nation it serves, the House of Representatives is big, busy, and diverse in both heritage and perspectives. House is under order. Pursuant to Clause 8 of Rule 20. First formed with just 65 members from the original 13 states, the House of Representatives grew with the expansion of the country to over 400 members by the early part of the 20th century. By law, its size is now set at 435 voting members, plus non-voting delegates from the District of Columbia and other U.S. territories outside the 50 states. To reflect shifts in national population, representatives are reapportioned among the states every 10 years, based on the national census. The House evolved as it grew over time. The need to organize such a large membership into an effective legislative body capable of carrying out its constitutional duties gave rise to a carefully structured institution. The two-party system that has developed over the nation's history plays a central role and is key to House leadership. The nays are 223, the nays are 201, the bill is passed. 
Members of the majority party nominate the speaker, who is then officially elected by the full house. The speaker has a unique role, one that doesn't exist in the Senate, in managing the flow of bills through such a large body. Bills may be introduced in either the House or the Senate, but the Constitution stipulates that all bills for raising revenue shall originate in the House of Representatives. Page 15, line 14. Once introduced, bills are referred to the appropriate committee. Again, just to point out, this is really a very urgent issue. If the committee decides a bill should be considered by the entire House, the bill is sent to the floor. H.R. 3675, a bill for... Where the leadership steers it toward a final vote by the full Civil membership. Civil penalties for violations involving unfair or... Debate time is strictly limited. In the end, it is the will and the votes of the majority of House members that determine the outcome. The age are 399, the nays are 3, the bill is passed. Without objection, motion be considered laid upon the table. Managing the process closely enables the House to act quickly on massive amounts of business, so the federal government can meet its obligations to citizens. From mailing social security checks, to keeping national parks open, to providing for the needs of the military. Each bill passed by the House moves to the Senate for a very different but equally rigorous process of research, review, revision, and debate. If the House and Senate pass different versions of a bill, Members of the House meet with Senators and Conference Committee to negotiate a single, final piece of legislation that is then voted on in both Houses. And without objection, a motion to reconsider is laid upon the table. To be effective and leverage their impact in an institution this large, representatives tend to specialize in the areas of their committee assignments. Conferring with other colleagues who've developed expertise in different areas keeps members informed on the vast range of bills moving through Congress. Members of the House are constantly sharing information as they meet in the hallways of House office buildings, on the steps of the Capitol, and as they gather in the House chamber. Regardless of party, members often share common ground on basic policy areas and collaborate on vital concerns their constituents have in common. They also hear from groups and coalitions representing hundreds of different perspectives and stay closely connected to local issues through their district offices and time at home. The entire House comes up for election every two years in November and a new Congress is convened the following January. leaders who began national political careers here. Who speaks for the American people? An early member of the House called it a solemn assembly, the representative of the people, the repository of their power, the image of their wisdom. Later, the mark of an effective representative is unlimited energy, an appetite for detail, and a desire to make an impact in the service of the people. The House of Representatives closely reflects who we are as a people. The men and women we elect to represent us focus on addressing problems and making laws that affect our lives in thousands of tangible, noticeable ways large and small, every day. This is the People's Chamber, the United States House of Representatives. <laughs>